All right, all right. So the big question is, have you ever printed with polypropylene before? It's uh, PP is the filament. And it can be kind of tricky. It's, uh, I ran into a project the other day that uh, it required some fairly large pieces, right? It's not like, uh, it's not like, a, a, like a little piece or something like this. It was, they were fairly large and very thick, right? Um, they were probably five millimeters, maybe, or you know, two hundred thousandths thick, and um, and they wanted them solid, right? It's not like it just had two or three walls and you know, fifty percent, fifteen percent infill or something like that. It was like they they wanted it solid. Uh, so it took a little while to print, and it was really really tricky. Now the polypropylene has, uh, you run into the same problems with any other, you know, filament, you know, where you, you're, you're worried about it uh, adhering to the plate and, uh, or if there's going to be any warping involved, uh, you got to worry about the same things, but polypropylene behaves totally very different, I should say, not totally different, but very different. For one thing, you'll notice that, uh, that it's not hygroscopic, you know, so I, I still put them in my uh, uh, my dryers and, you know, use that as the spool, you know, to go to my P1, uh, the P1S's. But it, I didn't have to worry about drying the stuff and all that, right? And I asked around, because there's quite a bit, there there's quite a few different temperature settings uh, to look up. Uh, what is it? Uh, I played with the, the temperature settings for the nozzle and the bed. Uh, the fan speeds, uh, and then even ended up trying um, different brands of polypropylene. So, well, let's take a look at, at what I found out. So I did a little research um, when I first got started with it, and and a lot of guys are saying, uh, you know, use tape, you know, to, to get it to stick to the bed and just regular packing tape, right? No, not masking tape or anything like that, packing tape. It's like, huh, well, that was interesting. Um, so I just researched why. I mean, it was basically uh, packing tape, and, and, and you need to double check this, but a lot of the packing tape will have a polypropylene backing on it. So when you put that stuff down on the bed, the polypropylene will stick to polypropylene, right? Uh, I, so I tried that and then I started reading about the glues, the specific glue to use because uh, it's not your normal, uh, you know, Elmer's purple stuff. It's uh, this stuff I use, it's uh, Maggie goo and it's made specifically for polypropylene. And the good thing about this, uh, by the way, I started looking up on Maggie Goo and started looking up about, uh, you know, what's up with their glue, right? Well, they have a database on all the number of uh, filaments that they've tested with. And that was a, a, a great set of data. You can go through and they even had, um, was it Brascom was the first polypropylene I used? Well, they had a whole database on it too. So it gave me a good baseline to start testing with. Now back to the tape. Um, I had some packing tape. Uh, wasn't quite sure if it had polypropylene on it or not. So I looked it up. You know, I looked up a Scotch, and they have all the the data sheets on all their tapes and everything. And the tape I had was actually a pretty good tape, and it had polypropylene backing and all that good stuff. So I tried it too. Um, so that gave me a baseline to start with, right? I had some past uh, uh, figures that uh, Maggie Goo had used uh, as far as for temperature, and of course, you know, the, the manufacturer of the, uh, of the polypropylene, they have their own uh, recommended print settings. Um, and this was pretty common along with all the other data I found that from anywhere from 220 to 240 C for the uh, uh, extruder temperature, and I ended up normalizing on 230. It seemed like it uh, 
it flowed very well and the layer stuck. Uh, so I stuck with that. Recommended uh, bed temperatures uh, 60 to 80 they were giving on this. Um, and on the Maggie Goose site, I believe they were saying 100 to start with and down to 90 or 110 down to 100. So they, their temperatures were way up there. Um, uh, printing speed, you know, the, say the uh, the first layer, I, I, had, I had it down at 40, I believe, and uh, and then for normal printing speed, I slowed it way down, at least for these, you know, P1Ps and uh, the Bamboo Lab stuff. Uh, I went to 80 for the outer walls and I think 100 on the inner walls. So that's, that's actually pretty slow for these printers, right? Um, well, that's what I, you know... Uh, my baseline printing and the first time I did it I tried the polypropylene on on just every type of bed that I had the the, the cold plates the, the uh, high temp plate the engineering plate and then uh, the textured PEI plate from bamboo labs and without any glue or tape it would not stick to anything right um, Yeah, there's a sample I'll show you here in a minute. And so the first thing I tried, since I already had the tape on hand, well, I tried uh, applying the tape to one of the beds, right? And this, I just wanted the smooth bed, so I just put it on the high temp plate and uh, put glue on, and I used uh, one of these scrapers, you know, as a, a squeegee, you know, to make sure there's not going to be any air bubbles or anything underneath the tape. And and I tried with that at first. Uh, I went ahead and ordered the Maggie Goo glue, and while I was waiting, I just tried it with the uh, with the tape. And when I put all that on, um, at first it seemed like it was printing fairly well, right? It uh, Seemed like it was adhering to the tape, but with the high temp on the beds from 80, and I think I, I was trying at 100 at the time, uh, some bubbles started to form underneath the tape. Um, now I know I squeegeed all the air out of it, so I don't know if it's just the, uh, the, the adhesive that was on the tape was giving out or um, the adhesive under uh, that temperature, maybe it was uh, letting off some fumes and gases and stuff and that was causing these bubbles. And when the bubbles appear and then, well, it, it, it wasn't gonna hold that piece, you know. Um, I had a bunch of old samples here. So here's the bottom of one of them, but, and you'll see, I'll, I'll get a close up for you, but it's it looks like it's concave or whatever, it starts to, to, uh, to bend upwards and and when that happened on the tape then you can see you, you can tell it was just it was just taking it right off the bed right now I tried that with uh, the tape on just every you know uh, bed mat that I had right uh, on every plate but that didn't seem to work uh, when I got through with that my tape I mean the uh, the glue came in right so in this case I went ahead and just went straight to the uh, the textured PEI and uh, put glue on it and and that seemed to be working pretty well right uh, up to a point after it, it started to get thicker like this uh, before it could ever start the walls well, it was happening again. This thing, it was just tearing the, and, and, and the settings that I have on this, you can see the, the size of the brim, right? They were, you know, 20 millimeter brim. And while I was doing that, and I'll show you some of the settings that I used, um, mainly the, the slow speed, uh, I had, uh, the brim on it was very wide, and they recommend just about everybody, you know, was recommending a 20 millimeter brim. So I put that on there, and that seemed to work. But then sooner or later, it was still 
tearing it up and I mean even the the brims and you can see the bubbles coming up it's just discolored and it was just taking it right off but here I'll show you the let me get let me show you the settings that I that I put on this thing um, before I go any further well okay so you can see I'm using Creo and I just slapped this little test box up there um, this is not the uh, not one of the pieces that, uh, not one of the thick pieces that I had to make. Uh, I didn't want to show you too much detail on that, but this will will go just fine. So you can see I'm losing. I'm using this PS1, uh, the high temp plate. Well, actually, um, I did it on the textured PEI plate. Now here's the uh, the filament that I used. I saved it as the the brass and PP FL100 um, and but you can see here uh, when I tried to set the filament I mean there's nothing here for 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 PP for polypropylene so I just randomly took the generic PETG and uh, and I did do a flow calibration on it so it was 0 0.040 and I came over here and this is where I changed the filament um, it's PETG like I said there's no PP uh, no polypropylene but I just labeled it you know the Brascom and made my settings accordingly which uh, between 220 and 250 uh, so I set the nozzle at 230. This is what I ended up with. On the high temp plate at 100, the textured PEI plate I set at 80 um, for the first layer and then go down to 70. Um, the cooling, uh, you can see the fans here. So for the first three layers, there's no cooling. Um, and the minimum fan fan speed and max fan speed so you can see the 10 percent and 20 percent so the fans while they're always on there's only 20 percent and I could probably go down to 10 but uh, but it seemed to work okay that way and uh, auxiliary part cooling fan zero didn't want anything there so that was my settings and then I renamed it you know the Braskin PP so I'll know what's going on um, so here I labeled this the standard for polypropylene and quality wise it was pretty standard settings here uh, the first layer um, when I tried Brascom because I actually I'm going to probably rename this and, and go with uh, uh, Arion that's probably going to be my default um, setting. Well, let's see. No, I mean the, uh, let's see, let's rename this. Uh, Arion. Everything else is going to stay the same. I'm just going to change the, uh, Oops. And and I'll label it white because I know I can get it in black. Um, and I can also get it uh, with carbon fiber or glass fiber. So, so here I'll know what's going on. Um, let's see, let's go back to the quality. Uh, the first layer, I even tried a, a larger, uh, the 0.55 millimeter, and that was a little much. Um, but all that stayed on. Uh, there's no ironing. Uh, 
only one wall on first layer and I'll uncheck that and strength okay the, the the piece that I made it was very thick like I said it was um, what five millimeters or so or you know two hundred thousand solid so I made uh, six wall loops and went ahead and set the uh, the density the, the infill at a hundred percent but with the walls like this I mean it was like a like a big cup and and that filled it up there uh, let's see speed wise you can see 40 millimeters per second for the first layer um, for the infill at 80 but you can see I set uh, the outer wall at 80 the inner wall at 100 and you know for these bamboo lab machines that's that's pretty slow and when I'm looking at it you know the sparse infill I could have set all this down um, I could probably print these on a uh, on one of my Ender threes that I modified. You know, I can go up to eighty with those. So, yeah, I probably could print that on on one. Uh, they're not enclosed, but as long as there's no draft. But um, anyway, let's move on. Um, there was no support needed on it. It's just like this cube, right? There, there's no, no support needed. Um, so for bed adhesion, I didn't want any loops, but you can see the brim type. I did outer and inner because those pieces that I showed you, um, it did have like a hole, like a donut hole, and and I went ahead and put it on the inner on that also. But the brim width is 20, 20 millimeter and the brim object gap is zero so so you can see the edges here yeah I didn't want any gap between the brim and the part you know they on here some of the settings you you, you see a gap there a very small gap and they're saying yeah it'll help hold it on but it'll it'll make it easier to, to take it off you know to to remove the brim once it's finished and I was like no I need that brim to hold on you know and and I'll clean it up afterwards um, let's see I think that was it yeah so those are the basic settings that I that I used and you can tweak it from there yeah so you can see um, at that time when I was you know doing all my settings and everything uh, there was nothing there was no preset anything for for polypropylene and so I just ended up um, labeling it as a PETG and then going in and uh, modifying everything to, to fit the parameters that I want you know as far as temperature and um, and then labeled it you know the Brescom whatever polypropylene but just just started from scratch right but it's I guess the temperature and all that stuff and the bed setting is wasn't uncommon so it was no big deal but you can see that's the way I ended up doing it there um, and I tried both uh, mainly in Orca uh, I tried in studio at one point and did the X1 carbon and I'll show you that a little later but for these first tests you know I'd used Orca and I used these uh, the P1S's so after all that you know I, I tried the tape I tried the glue I tried uh, different temperature settings I tried um, all the different uh, build plates I mean I tried everything and sooner or later it just started to lift off of there you know it was just warping big time and that's even with cutting the fans off I had you know you name it so I was running out of time and I went ahead and I thought, you know, I'm going to try a different brand of polypropylene. And, and of course I went straight to Amazon because, you know, they, they had a few uh, choices and, and I can get them here the fastest, right? And, and the strange thing, you know, because I, I did a little research on that also and, and looked around at, at, at some of the different brands and a lot of them, they looked... I guess you can say they're more for the industrial scale, uh, industrial applications, and they didn't have the 1.75 millimeter 
filament. I mean, all their stuff, you know, you get the thicker stuff, the two point, what is it, 2.85 or whatever it is. Um, that's all it was available in, right? Uh, so, so I got to Amazon and got two more brands in. And lo and behold, let's see. Yeah, one of them was there. Arion, E R Y O N E, Arion, Airy One. And it was on Amazon. And luckily, it was during the holiday season, gearing up for it. And I got it at a good price. And lo and behold, man, I put that on there. And I went straight to the to the uh, uh, textured PEI bed, and yeah, so I went straight to that. Applied glue. You can see some of the glue around these outer edges that were left. Um, but I put that that on there, and. And the filament, you know, that first print, that first layer, man, it was coming out great. And I could tell, I could tell it was still trying to warp. Just kind of like this, when you're looking at, um, this is just a sample for a little box. But when you look at it real close, you can see the, see the, the bubbles here on the corner. That's, that's it lifting the, uh, the brim off of there. Um, well, it was doing it with these pieces um, like this, very large, very thick, uh, solid pieces. And, and it was trying. I mean, it, they were, it was really, really trying to, uh, to, to lift it off, but it was, it was successful. It wasn't totally, totally flat, um, but it looks like it was acceptable. And I'm probably still going to try another brand and that way at least I'll have two different sources for this polypropylene uh, just in case it comes out and um, I just don't want any uh, continuity of supply problems I don't want to have a, a job coming up um, where I have more quantities of these things to, to pump out and and not be able to find any filament right <laughs> at least the stuff that's working so I want at least two sources, and but I know this uh, the airy one is going to be one of them. The other one, the other one I tried uh, this Brascom, and it seemed like it was it, it's it's doing good on the smaller, thin walled pieces. And you can see this is uh, real pliable. It's pretty neat stuff when you, when you print with it, and and I, I've I've seen some stuff with this before, and it's usually just like a oh like little squeeze bottles or something or uh, hinges because this stuff can bend back and forth. Um, yeah, look at the brim here. I mean, it's it's real pliable and it very durable, very tough. It's uh. And it's, uh, I guess, FDA, I don't know, FDA approved or what. It's supposed to be food friendly, I guess you could say. Um, but, so I might still, still use this one brand, but not for this thicker stuff, right? So, I'll be looking at that and... I guess a couple of notes on what actually happened when I was printing these, this stuff out. A couple of pointers. Um, this stuff mainly I had, um, I was printing them on these P1Ps and I had a new one over here that I also printed off. I had two of them going and, uh, and this one kept clogging. Um, it happened a couple of times and I finally just wait a second and that's we can see with these samples I was showing you they were turning out great and they were sticking to the bed but then um, the nozzle started to uh, 
uh, clog. And, and I thought about it and slept on it and I woke up the next day, the next day and I started thinking, you know, this new one does not have, it, it has the stainless steel nozzle on it. All my other ones I had already converted over and they have the hardened steel nozzles and that's the only difference. So just a, a, a bit of info there. If you run into that problem, check and see, you know, um, cause I switched over to the hardened steel nozzle and that solved it for some reason, you know, um, what else on, let's see the X one carbon. Um, I had a couple of spools up here and I knew one of them was running out and I still had a couple more pieces to print. So I put two of them side by side up here in the, on the AMS. So that if it runs out of, you know, filament and I had it set so that it, if it runs out, it'll automatically go to the next one. And it operated like a charm on the AMS. So I didn't have any problem with it at first. I was thinking, I wonder if it's going to be like TPM because it is kind of a, a soft feeling, um, filament and, but there was no problem. I mean, it, it ran through the AMS, uh, pretty nicely and well, I would uh, show you the finished parts, but I've already shipped them off to the customer and, um, I just had some, a lot of this scrap. I mean, a lot of scrap, actually, I have a whole box full of this stuff and, but it was a learning experience, right? Um, now I know exactly what to do with uh, polypropylene, at least for these machines. Um, I heard some feedback that they, they can't, it can be done on, on a bed slinger. I have not tried it on the A1 yet. Um, it's right here in front of me. I guess I could do that just out of curiosity, but, but that's, you know, I like the enclosed printers and this is why with this and, um, because within the enclosure, you know, I, I, I can turn the fans off and I know I don't have any, uh, uh, the vents are closed, everything. I'm not going to have any temperature changes within the enclosure, you know, due to outside sources or any drafts, anything like that. And, and it worked out perfect, you know, because with this stuff, uh, what was I ended up printing at 230 degrees on the nozzle um, 80 degree bed and I cut the fans down to 10, uh, 20% max. Um, and that worked and, and all the other fans I cut off. So there wouldn't be any other draft except for the 20% fan on the part cooler fan. So that just to make sure it's going to, uh, uh, the layer adhesion, right? And that way it's, it, it's not such a huge temperature fluctuation, uh, when it's cooling off, when it does that, this stuff really warps. That's what you got to watch, watch out for is, uh, any temperature fluctuation or, um, cooling or heating or anything like that. Um, but I guess that's it. Uh, I know it was, uh, it was definitely a challenge <laughs> and I learned a lot on it. So if, uh, if you're going to try something with polypropylene and you have any questions, hopefully this will help you out. At least give you a baseline on what to, what to start testing at, right? And because I found out also it does matter on the brand of filament that you use. And you can see the, the difference between them, especially if you're comparing the data on uh, the Maggie Goo site and look at the different polypropylene um, filaments that they have. And a lot of them vary. I mean, going from, you know, needing 200 and, you know, over 230, uh, C for the nozzle. And one of them, I, I think it was, uh, oh, I, I can't remember, but it was something about starting the bed at a hundred degrees. But after that first layer, you might as well just cut the, uh, uh, the bed heating off completely and, and let it cool down while it, prints the rest of the stuff. I was like, wow. I mean, it's totally different than, um, than this stuff for the breast gum. They're, they're saying, uh, you know, the 230 degree, 
nozzle but starting at 100 C uh, and just going down to 90 and keeping it at that and then using the 20 degree brim and um, and even then they were kind of vague on well it's recommended to you know use the use some kind of glue and stay away from temperature fluctuations right um, and I think there was another form somewhere uh, and one of them is it's you know when I first found out about the tape it was it was on Facebook forum and uh, and there's a couple of guys I can't remember their names but you know who you are if you're if you're watching this and they they said use the packing tape it's like all right I'll try that that um, that was some good tips and and I guess I will try it again I'm gonna use some different tape with uh, different adhesive on it uh, this stuff was some heavy-duty stuff from Scotch uh, 3M and I think it was just the the adhesive part of it was letting off some fumes and causing the bubbles you know causing the tape to rise up on off the bed but it was polypropylene so that was good so I'll, I'll try uh, a different tape and see if the uh, adhesive part will uh, adhere to the bed better right if so then that's a feasible <coughs> that's a feasible option because this tape I mean this this glue I'm going to keep using this for sure. This was some really good stuff after I found the, the filament that would work. And it seemed kind of expensive at first. I was like, man, you know, 20, 20 bucks, 25 bucks, whatever it was for that, for glue. But man, it lasts, it's lasting a long, long time, right? It's not like it's going to disappear anytime soon. You know, you put a layer on there and I was putting multiple layers, cleaning them off, putting another layer. I mean, over and over and over I did... 14, 15, 16 different iterations, and there's still a lot of glue left. Um, but from my understanding, once you put this on there and start printing with it, um, you can leave it on there uh, for multiple, multiple prints. And I forget how many they're saying, some ungodly amount. But um, I just like having a you know, fresh uh, coating on it. But it, it was like 20 plus prints. I, I forget exactly what it is, so don't quote me on that. But uh, but I guess that is it. Uh, I, I'm starting to ramble again, as always. But uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up. And uh, if you're ever trying something with polypropylene, uh, just establish a baseline on on what your settings are going to be. Because it seems like it's going to vary between manufacturers and it's going to vary between your printer, right? So, but I guess what I, my, my settings I used, they were probably, you know, right there in the middle. And then you can fluctuate from there. At least it gives you a baseline to, uh, to do some stuff. But anyway, that's, that's it for this video. So, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch for my next video.